Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to uh, Lazy Devs. Welcome to um, this roguelike tutorial. Uh, so we're still shepherding our procedural generation, but it seems like we might be getting there. It seems like we're we're kind of starting to develop the really nice levels. So uh, the next step I want to be doing is kind of like some more of a you know gameplay related kind of stuff, kind of game structure related stuff. I want to have like a start screen, like a. Uh, I call it a hub world, so to speak. Um, but the problem with the hub world is that this, this is something that I will be like not procedural generated, it will be manually crafted. And, and that's bad because we, uh, how, how, how does that work? Like how do, can we manually craft now that everything is procedural generated? We had like this manually crafted level here, but that, that was great. But you know, that's, uh, oh, how do you mean? Um, so what I want to have is a function because you know there's a bunch of map real estate that we're not using we're always using like this little part over here so what I want to do is I want to create a map uh, a feature that allows us to copy a map from um, from a different area into our our actual map so let me let me let me uh, make this let me create a little like little 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 starting room it's not going to be big for now just like something that that we can see if it copied everything correctly and then maybe like something like something like this so we can have like a like a test screen basically and so my idea is to to have like a like a hub that is not procedurally generated but actually you know uh handcrafted and copy uh, and and I, I, it will be in a different part a different area of the map and at the beginning of the game you know at level zero we're going to copy that over into our map uh, and so this is going to be our current layer starting position and we can even put in like something like this and we're going to put it in the stairs so we can go upstairs something along these lines okay so um, yeah, let's do that real quick. So this is gonna be, um, I'm not sure if it's generation. That might be tools actually. And we're gonna call this function copy map. And then it's gonna be X and Y. These are gonna be X and Y positions of where we're copying the map from. And um, the only thing for us to do, it's gonna be like a really simple function. It might, we might actually have a lot of time left in this episode to do some other things. And we're just gonna loop through this. Um, um, specifically, we're gonna do. Oh, we have to make sure. Go, let's go underscore here, um, and then plus x, and then. Oh wait, no, 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 that's that's fine. And then we're gonna go m set x y m get underscore x plus x underscore y plus y, uh, and we're gonna put them in m set. Like this, so we are grabbing the tiles from somewhere else in the map and putting them in in our map. And so the the way we do this is here in in generation when we generate the floor, we're gonna say if floor equals zero, then we're gonna copy the next map over. So it's gonna be sixteen zero. Let's try that. Um, there's. A, I'm set not more than close. That's good. Okay, it did not work. Uh, why? Why? Ten floor zero. Um, I know what the problem might be. No. Oh, and that afterwards, uh, uh, we generated the map. We copied the map over, but afterward we generated it. So you see, it copies the map. It's is that correct? Is that how it's supposed to be looking? Is that how I designed this map? It look okay. Uh, let's let's make this like this. Okay. Ah, this is so good. Okay. Um, maybe something I want to be uh, changing. Like if I copy over the map, I want to maybe put my my, my player location at the stairs. Um, so let me fumble around this a little bit. So maybe. Tools. There we go. Maybe we're gonna do something like local TLE. And then we're gonna go TLE equals mget. More a bit of a more elaborate situation here. Um, and then TLE in here. And then if TLE equals 
um, the actual stairs, so this one, 15, then, and then pmob.x equals uh, x, and then pmob.y equals y. So that way our, our character also starts at, at the location of the pre-generated map. And this is great because now we have like this, um, this um, starting location and we can actually climb the stairs. This is floor two. This is floor. See, that was another flash. We have to deal with this flash. I have to look how I how I did the flash last time, how I solved the flash last time around the flash problem. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um. Okay. Mm, I want to also have like an ending. I want to have like a final, uh, final, you know, game over kind of situation where it's like, oh, you did the thing, you you won. So let me let me add this as well. Um, for this, is kind of like um, it would be good to kind of have control, you know, where exactly the game ends. Um, let's just hard code it. I don't think we need to do it with a variable. So uh, my idea is that at the floor number nine is going to be the final floor. Uh, so here in generation. And then, you know, if, if this is your game, you can do it differently else. Else if floor equals nine, then we're going to copy the next map over. And that's going to be the map 32. I haven't drawn this map yet, so I will do that now. And again, I'm going to make sure that this is perfectly centered. And, you know, we, later on we're going to make them nice and beautiful. But for now, I'm like cont content with just making it something like this. And then, I don't know, something like this. Yeah, that's fine. And the idea is that, you know, you have to... Um, the goal of our game is to find the magical uh, uh, kielbasa. And so this is the place where the kielbasa will go later on. Um, do I do it now? Nee. No, we're going to do the kielbasa later. Like finish the game is going to do something, something we might do later. Um, for now, I'm just going to put in down a this guy here. And that's going to be our, our kielbasa placeholder, basically. Um, so if we're going to read a, a, the table, and this is... Um, uh, and this is uh, floor number nine, and that will end the game. This was what I, what I would be thinking. So let's do that real quick. So let's do the kielbasa, maybe. Yeah, that would be maybe good. Um, first of all, let me let me just check if this works. So let's make it so that, um, just like temporarily, let's make it so that floor number one is going to be the final floor. It's going to be a very small game. <laughs> So immediately in floor one, and that uh, basically ends the game immediately. So now if I bump this thing, I want to win this game. Um, and so there's this is a bit of an awkward situation because... Um, where is it? Gameplay here. A bump. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be this stone tablet here, right? And we had like the stone tablet before. Um, we're going to go like something if floor equals two, or it's, if it's... Yeah, let's if, if equals one for now, then. Uh, so how do we end the game, right? Like if ending the game here would be a bit weird because then we might be in, in the middle of like a game update function that kind of maybe switches the update function. So, um, and also you kind of want to see the animation. We want to play it out and then end the game. So something I, I would maybe add here is something like, uh, we're going to add a new variable and we're going to call this win. And if that's set to true, um, then after the animation is done, uh, we're gonna show the end screen. And here at the beginning of the game, we just say win equals false. 
Seems like a very fundamental variable, right? Uh, where do we put this? I mean, let's put it when equals false. And then here in the, we already have like a gameplay function that checks for the ending, check end, right? So we're gonna go if, if win, then, and then else if, pmop and so forth. So what happens if you win? Um, uh, the window also goes away. We also change these and we also fade out. Ah, dang, I, ah. Uh, and you know, this might be a situation where we maybe merge them together later on. I'm gonna put a star next to it because maybe this is something that we can merge a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, but I don't want to draw the game over. Well, first let's see if the game over works, and then later on we're gonna we can tweak the rest. Okay, so we're going up the stairs, and then we're bumping this guy, and that is <laughs> we died. Uh, but we don't want to die. We want to have like a different screen. I want to show a different screen. So I'm gonna call this draw win. Uh, but the update function is actually gonna be the same you win. Um, the update function is going to be the same. So we're going to keep everything here around here. And um, uh, so we're going to keep the update function around, but we're going to just change the draw function. So update function stays, this changes, draw win. Okay, good. And we press a button and we're back uh, in the game. Cool. So this is already working. Um, again, later on we're going to make it beautiful and everything. Just I just want to set up like the uh, fundamental structure. Um, so we can now put the end floor to number nine again, and this is a bit awkward because we have to also do it here in the gameplay as well. Uh, stone tablet. There we go. So we, this might be actually worth maybe a variable. Let's, let's make it the variable win floor so if it's one and you know later on we can fix this i'm gonna also set it with a star we could probably maybe later on save some some uh some tokens with that guy um and then here floor equals win floor and here in the gen function else floor equals win floor good Good. So this is uh, set to one now, and if we set it to nine, we actually have to go through eight floors, and the ninth floor is going to be the, the final floor. And because we're Minecraft, we can go through through walls anyway. So yeah, there's still this flash. I don't like the flash. This is an interesting level because like you can just go through this hallway and then you finish this entire level without entering any rooms. Yeah, there, there was a flash there, right? I'm not I'm not cr taking crazy pills. Um, I'm going through this game once just because it gives me an opportunity to see some levels. And also like we're ch checking the general, you know, structure of the game here. So this is floor number six. Also kind of like you see how much gameplay we created. Just like imagine like all of this being uh, populated by enemies and so forth. This would be this would be quite quite a lot of gameplay. It actually might we might actually shorten it to maybe just six floors because eight floors is a lot. I like how we can just like shortcut everything. Okay, the ninth floor is gonna be this good. Perfection. Um, okay, then let's see what else we got in our to-do list. Mm -hmm. Entry not in an alcove. Um, I'm gonna put this down there. Hub level is already taken care of. So technically the next part is gonna be about monsters. 
Um, let me first, before we go into the monster, let me make a nice entry uh, entry um, level. I, I kind of, I'm fine with the final level. That's kind of like looks okay. Again, we're gonna later on beautify everything anyway, but just like in, in, at the beginning, because, oh yeah, and also wanted to do one, one more little detail here. Um, so, so I don't like how we can do some little optimization. L look at here where we fill everything with, um, with walls. Well, now that we have like this other function, we don't need that anymore. So let's, let's do that. Um, I want to have a this guy here. I want to have like an entire screen filled with walls prepared and ready to go. And instead of filling the uh, the screen with walls, I'm just going to copy this part of the map over, and that's going to be saving us a little bit, like ten tokens or so, maybe a little bit less, because the function itself costs tokens. Uh, just filling it up real quick. There we go. And perfection. Okay. Uh, let, let's make this completely blank. And then here as well, I want to have this, the hub world. I want it to look a little bit nicer. I don't like how it looks. So let's make this a little bit nicer. Um, yeah, let's think, let's, let's think about this real quick. Maybe we have something like this, maybe here, and then it's gonna be like an entrance and then maybe something like, um, I had last time around like three spaces in both directions. And then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, something like this. A room of this size, six even, okay. And then we're gonna put some walls around this. So we have like the little hub world where we can place some stuff. And you know, there might be there, there might be like a tablet perhaps at some point. Maybe uh, we're gonna put like a, in a welcoming tablet here. Um, then maybe something like this, some vases, just some vases for us to play around with. And then of course, uh, after the this thing, we're gonna have a stairs going upwards. Just a little welcoming, like a little landing sp sp space. So we're not like just starting at an empty screen, but we have a thing, we can bump it, there's gonna be like a welcoming screen. So let's do that perhaps. Um, okay, so here in um, in this function that deals with bumpy, us bumping the stone tablet, I'm gonna go if floor equals zero then, and then I paste this in from my prototype because so it's basically just gonna say, um, I'm not sure if show text is the right one. I think it, we called it show talk. Uh, welcome to pork like, climb this sausage tower to obtain the ultimate power of this golden kielbasa. And that's gonna be it. Just like a little w welcoming message. Uh, there's a problem here. Oh, right, right, right. Because I'm using, I think I'm using something that is. Yeah, okay. Um, I should use um, an array here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. My prototype works a little bit differently. I'm not going to explain this later on. Okay, and if you're wondering what a kielbasa is, well, that is a very special type of Polish sauces, sausage. It is uh, smoked and it is very spicy. No, not spicy, but it's very, um, it smells very nice. Okay, and then, you know, I could even add maybe like another line at the end. And it looks a little better. Maybe even like a line at the beginning. You can use like the empty lines too, yes. Um, no, I don't like the first line. I, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm, that's better. 
I don't want it to cover the entire screen. So there's a bit of an issue here where we can get <laughs> items from these um, from these uh, pots, but uh, that's something we're gonna just deal with later on. Okay, and then we can cl start climbing this tower. Sweet. So this part is done. Uh, now is the, comes the part where we kind of... Um, oh no, no, it's not quite done. I, I wanted to replace this with copy map. Uh, so it's 32 plus 16, right? 48, zero. Hopefully this works. It seems to be working. I'm not sure if it's work, it works, but it seems to be working. Um, maybe if we turn off everything else. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, it, it copied it copied the the map full of wall tiles over, so that's good. Sweet. Um, yeah, we don't need the star anymore because that's something that's been taken care of. That's why I put the star in the first place. Good. So what else uh, comes up now? So we're gonna start thinking about how to place monsters uh, in our map, and that's kind of like um, it's just gonna be kind of like a pretty pretty simple process. What I want to do is I want to loop through all of the rooms. Uh, first of all, every level should have like a number of monsters that we should place in this level. And then we're going to loop through all of the levels and then um, through all the rooms in the level and then I'm going to start placing monsters in, in this level. That's basically my my idea here. So uh, let's let's try to pull this off. Let's just place a bunch of monsters in, in the rooms. Okay, so here is um, here is the general procedure that we're going to go through. We're going to have like a number of mobs that we have to spawn. Do I call it? I think spawn mobs. Is that a good name? I have add mob, but that's not. Yeah. So I'm going to put the spawn mobs actually here in the among the other mobs. I think that's good. So we're going to go function spawn mobs. Because there's going to be a bunch of other stuff in a, in a in a in this generator tab, and we're not going to have maybe have too much stuff in a in a mobs um, function yet. Just generally, like we're going to have like a number of mobs that we have to spawn, um, and then uh, so at least uh, placed. We're going to have like an like a counter that counts how many mobs we already placed, and if that counter uh, of how many mobs we placed in the map reaches a certain um, like over goes above um, the maximum uh, or the minimum minimum of mobs that we need want to have in our level, then we, we, we call it quits. Um, it's, you know, like a very simple thing. Um, so how are we, now we want to loop through all of the rooms and place mobs in the rooms. Um, so for this, it's going to be a bit, it's going to be, it's, I always make things a bit complicated, um, but we're going to do something like a room, um, room pot. Like a pot of rooms, we're gonna put all of the rooms in our that we have in our array. Basically, copy the room array, and we're gonna loop through all of the rooms. And 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 um, when we place mobs in the room, we remove that room from this um, from this pot. So repeat until um, wait. No, 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 that's not how we do this. Uh, we're just gonna do a for um r in all rooms do and and we're just gonna do um room oh let's call this r, r pot room pot and then we're gonna go room pot dot add uh, no actually add room pot Basically, we just cloned this rooms array, uh, but we cloned it for our, you know, our nefarious purpose of, of, of putting mobs in them. And now we can do repeat, uh, and we're gonna repeat until um, hashtag our pot equals zero. If there is no longer any rooms that we can place that we haven't touched yet, or um, placed is greater than 
And so we're gonna do a no no new local variable. For now, it's gonna be local variable. But later, we're gonna replace it with something um, something others. But it's gonna be min months. The minimum amount. The minimum amount of monsters we're gonna have. I'm gonna set it to three for now. Uh, but later on, we, we might change. So if place is greater than min months, then uh, we're not gonna long, no longer gonna start uh, placing uh, mobs in our room. So what uh, what what else? Um, so now, and when we start placing monsters in the room, we're gonna go local r equals um, get r and d um, r pot. We're gonna get a random room and put it in r. Um, then we're going to delete our pot R. We're going to delete that room, that random room from the array because we have dealt with it. And so here is um, here's where we're going to actually uh, place the map. So we're going to go placed plus equals place or um, let's call it infest room. <laughs> I think this sounds better. Uh, so that infests the room with mobs. And um, we're gonna go function infest room r. And so this is where we actually start placing our, our little monsters, infest room. Uh, and that room will return how many monsters it was able to place in this room. Okay, when we're infesting a room, um, we're gonna do a, some, a similar uh, situation that we had above. So we're gonna go placed, um, equals zero and at the end we're going to return placed. Um, now let's actually do, um, let's go to num and that's we're going to do like a random amount of monsters. For for beginning I'm just going to do like something like plus, two plus a floor R and D uh, two, three. So it's uh, somewhere between two and two and four monsters. In, in each room and again later on we're going to tweak this this is just like something i want to see something uh and then we're gonna go, oh now actually this we have to do a place here right yeah yeah and then we're gonna do a repeat and we're gonna repeat this uh, process until the number of monsters we actually placed is greater or equals the number of monsters we want to have well, let's call this target. How many monsters we want to have. And so here inside, we're gonna do it like if something that we did previously when we just picking a random position in, like we just, here we're actually gonna start picking random positions in the room and seeing if they're walkable. And if they're walkable, we place a monster in there. So we're gonna go um, repeat. Here we're gonna go until uh, is walkable. Uh, here maybe we're gonna get like a x and y, so we have one. Is walkable x y, and here we have to check for mobs. We don't want to have two mobs to spawn on top of each other. Check mobs, like so. So now we're gonna we have to just put some random numbers in x and y, like random locations within this room, and that's something that's we're gonna be um, that's gonna be looking like this. R is the room that we got. R x uh, plus floor random r width that's gonna be x and that's gonna be also y um it might be a width plus one no it's not it's not plus one like so so we continue uh, picking random spots in the room until we find a, a spot that is walkable, that don't, doesn't have a monster yet. And here is where we actually, where we actually add the mob. Um, add mob. So we need a type. Um, so far, we only have one mob, so so it's gonna be fine. Um, but later on, we're gonna have multiple mobs, and that, then we're gonna expand this function a little bit. So x and y. Oh yeah, and also placed plus equals one. This could be a for next loop if you wanted to. Hmm. 
yeah, might be might be a good idea. So let's go like four four i equals uh, one to target do and then here and that might be might be made more sense and we don't need the placed anymore. Not sure if that actually saves tokens, uh, but yeah. And then we can just return the target. It seems seems easier to me. Okay, so let's try that. Let's see if this actually works. Probably not. I'm I'm shook. <laughs> it actually did work. <laughs> Holy crap! This is good. Uh, so something I want to check now is what happens if we abandon the monster. We're not actually going to trigger them. I'm going to go straight for the exit. I think we're getting more monsters now. I think the old monsters don't disappear. We never clear the mobs. Let me see real quick. There's monsters. Yeah, there's stay. So that's something that we have to take care of, and then that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, again, the numbers are not correct. They're, the numbers are definitely not correct. Like the fact that we only have spawning three, um, that we only have min months, uh, the minimum number of monsters is three and doesn't change either. It seems like more in later levels we should have a little bit more monsters. Um, so that's something that we're going to take care of later. But for now, I just want to make sure that, you know, advancing to the next level will, uh, will be fine. Uh, will correctly generate new levels and so forth. Um, so let me see. Uh, where is it? Gen. Let's do this here. So here and when we generate the map, we're going to say mobs equals, we're going to clear the mobs and we're going to go add mobs uh, p mob. We might do this we might do this here, maybe? Nah, we're gonna do it here, it's fine. Uh oh, it spawned us directly here, that's not good. Um, I mean, we are, we are Minecraft, we can, we can just go there. So, there are monsters. There's still monsters. Did, did I, is that not mobs? I, th I thought it was mobs. Or did I call it mob? Oh, it's mob, it's not mobs. It's just mob. Oops. I'm very inconsistent with this, by the way, I'm in that Causes me a lot of stress. Where am I? Where? Oh, I, oh and now I'm, long, I'm no longer visible. That's weird. Oh. <laughs> now, great. I, I want to get through and ignore the mobs, but they don't let me. Ah, come on, guys. It's, it's, I just want to go out. There were mobs. Now they're no longer there, and I have five mobs, or four mobs in this case, so that's good. Cool. Now this function is like a very raw and simple function, the spawn mobs function, something that doesn't take care of. What if we have like a very high requirements for mobs, like we want to spawn 40 mobs, and the rooms that we get that we are that we're going through don't allow us this this that they, there's not enough room rooms to satisfy the mob requirements. Uh, well, in this case, um, we we're just not going to spawn any more mobs. But actually, what we might add here is um, a function that uh, spawns mobs in hallways if the rooms no longer have any sp any space. And also, we might actually do make sure that if um, our starting location is, is in a room, that this room don't, won't have any mobs. Maybe some things that to think about. But you know, that, again, that's something that we're going to uh, deal with uh, uh, at a later episode. Okay, guys. So this is going to be it for uh, this time. Mm. I'm going to put some to-do list for, for next time. So we have um, monsters, uh, but I'm going to actually put uh, better monsters down here. Um, and also items. 
Um, so if we go go to the items, we actually can. Let's let's do the better monsters next time. So what I'm thinking is actually it would be nice now to think about generally the progression. We have like the slime monster that's like the simplest monster. Um, but it would be nice to think about you know what other monsters there are and and how to make you know more difficult monsters spawn spawn at further levels or maybe not just difficult just different monsters spawn in later levels so the, the higher you go along, among the floors you will get different stuff but on the other hand like that's um, not necessarily a variation that is necessary right now so something that we also want to be doing is so we have decorations um, so we should split this maybe in decorations room decorations but also tile decorations. So both both would be things uh, to think about. Um, uh, tile decorations is um, is the wall tiles surrounding. You know, the, right now we have only have one wall tile, and that's like this this not that great looking wall tile. Uh, so we might add like these wall tiles that kind of like curve around and so forth. So that would be good next next step. But also room decorations where each room might have like some stuff in it. Um, so that might be, that might be, uh, that might also go hand in hand with items. Mm, not exactly sure which part of this we're gonna uh, tackle next. For now, let me know in the comment section if, if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, as always, check out the t-shirts. You can buy them in a t-shirt store, Lazy Devs t-shirt or the token limit t-shirt and check out the code that is available as a p8 file or as a github file thanks to omg mog and a github file github repository and uh, yeah check out the discord as well see you next time around guys bye bye